Okay, this is on probability models, and if you're doing correctives for this problem, you need to print out this page that's connected with the videos. And we're going to go through three different types of probability models that we could use. Uh, the first one's going to be an area diagram. So I'm going to do the first one, the one that's right here, and then you will try to do the one that's underneath it. Okay, so for this one right here, we have, um, we have to read the, the questions carefully so it doesn't get confused with the other kinds of probability problems. So Mr. Reader puts four red, five green, one yellow Sour Patch Kid in one bag. In another bag, he puts two yellow, three red, five green Skittles. You're going to pull one piece of candy from each bag. Okay, so that's the thing. We're going to actually be pulling two different things. So we've got to kind of separate them out. And then we use an area model to kind of demonstrate this. We're going to look at the probability that both pieces are red. So I've got to find the probability I get red, red, but their probabilities are not all equal. We don't have an equal amount of each one, so we have to be a little bit careful. At least one of the pieces of candy is green. Then you pick a yellow Sour Patch Kid and a green Skittle, and then you pick a red Sour Patch Kid or a yellow Skittle. So now what I'm going to do is calculate the probabilities for each one. So right here, we have 10 different Sour Patch Kids. And then on the other one, we have 10 different ones which are going to be um, used for um, the Skittles. So I'm going to calculate the probabilities, and I'm going to use decimals on this one. For the one you do, you'd probably be better off using, well, you could use decimals also, because this is like 0 0.5, 0 0.25, and 0.25. So we're going to go over and just make some comparisons. So start with the Sour, sour Patch Kids. Okay, so we've got 4 out of 10 are red. So I'm going to put this as 0.4. For the green one is going to be 5 out of 10, or 0.5. Yellow was 0.1. For the Skittles, I had 3 red. So that's 3 out of 10 again, so that's going to be 0.3. We had 5 green, so that's 0.5. And then 2 yellow is 0.2. Now what we're going to do is calculate the area of each one of these possibilities. So this square up here would represent two reds. This one represents a red Sour Patch Kid and a green Skittle. And we're just kind of break it up. And what we do with an area model is calculate the areas of each one of these. Now, if you did a tree diagram, you start off with one of them and go out through your three possibilities, looking at the probability of each one, and then build off a tree with each of the other types. So there's different models that work in different situations that work a little bit better. But I'm going to do an area model for this first one. So both pieces of candy are red. So that's going to be this one right here, red, red. Well, it's 0.4 times 0.3. Just multiply that out, you get 0.12. Now we got at least one piece is green. Well, now I'm going to choose all the ones that are going to be green. So we're going to have to go through and calculate each one of these. So I'm going to calculate out all the probabilities. This is 0.15. This is 0.1 times 0.3 be 0.03. This one's going to give me 0 0.2, 0 0.4 times 0 0.5. 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 is going to be 0 0.25. And then 0 0.1 times 0.5 is 0 0.05. And then we have 0 0.4 times 0 0.2 is 0 0.08. 0 0.5 times 0 0.2 is 0 0.1. 0 0.1 times 0 0.2 is 0 0.02. Now, if everything does correctly, you, know, you can always act as a check. These guys all have to add up to 0.1. These guys have to add up to 0.5. These guys have to, have to add up to 0.4. And same thing going across the columns. If I add up all the way across here, I have to get a total of 0.2. Okay, so let's look at ones. I want um, at least one piece is green. Well, I can take any one of the greens. So I'm just going to add all those up. So we've got 0.15 plus 0.25 plus 0.1 plus 0.2 plus 0.05. So I added up all of these, not counting this one twice. You just have to add those all up. 
Okay, we want to pick we pick a sour, yellow sour patch and a green skittle. So that's very specific. Yellow sour patch, so in this column, green skittle, there's only one of those, that's 0.05. We pick a red sour patch kid. So red sour patch, so that's anything in this column, or a yellow skittle. So that means if I take either one of those, I'm going to add up all of these. So let's count up all the ones that work after you get your area. So just going through that list, we have 0 0.12 plus 0 0.2 plus 0.08 plus 0.1 plus 0.02. And then we just have to add them up. So if you did, we have 0 0.2, 0 0.3, um, 0.32 and then 0.52, just adding them up. The big thing is just getting this list out right here. Okay, set up this one the same way. And you should try to do this one, and then I'm going to go over and do the next one. But when I set up this one, I would do spinner A maybe going down this direction, spinner B going across. There's not going to be as many squares. You're going to get six instead of nine, so this makes it a little bit easier. And again, you can use decimals for each one of those. Okay, so I'm going to pause. Go ahead. You should pause it, and I would try to do that one right now. Okay, now let's look at the other type. This is going to be using a um, tree diagram. So right here we have a cafeteria at a school is offering two main courses, hamburger or chicken sandwich. And with the main course, they have a choice of salad or fries. Okay, 60% of the students get the hamburger and 40% get the chicken sandwich. Okay, that's where I'm gonna start my tree diagram. So this one is gonna work really well with the tree diagram. So we have either a hamburger or we have chicken. So make kind of a big first branch when you do a tree diagram because we have to branch off of these. So we had 60% get the hamburger and we have 40% get the chicken. These have to total to one. Now for students who choose the hamburger, 80% get fries and 30% um, of the chickens, uh, students with the chicken sandwich get fries. Okay, so, and then the, they get a choice between salad and fries. So that means the rest are gonna be salads. So, if we're starting with the hamburger ones, we have 80%, they're gonna get fries, which means 20% get a salad and then for the chicken one, we had 30% got fries. And we, that means that 70% got salad. Okay, so once you build this up, multiply across to figure out what you have right here. So this one, if I do 0 0.6 times 0 0.8, that's 0.48. And this is hamburger with fries. 0 0.6 times 0 0.2, that's 0 0.12. This is a hamburger with a salad. 0 0.4 times 0 0.3 is 0 0.12. That's chicken with fries. And then 0 0.4 times 0 0.7 is 0 0.28. This is chicken with salad. Okay, if you've got the list done, then the rest of it goes pretty simple. Okay, so now, what is the probability that a student gets a chicken sandwich with fries? Well, chicken with fries, that's 0.12. And then we want to know what's the probability that a student gets a salad? So I'm going to choose any ones with a salad. So that's 0.28 plus 0.12 plus 0.48 plus 0.12. So we get basically a 0.4 chance. Okay, so you should try to do the next problem, which is going to be on the next page. And do this one with the tree diagram. Try to do the same kind of an idea. You're going to break it up. There's only a few possibilities. And then you're going to see which ones you can work with. You know, just different possibilities with the dance. 
Okay, let's look at the last type of problem, and this last one is using an organized list. So a new couple plans to have three children. Boys and girls are equally likely. We want to find the probability that the couple has uh, more girls than boys, and the probability that the couple has at least one boy. This is where an organized list works, because there's only so many possibilities and they're all equally likely. If they're all equally likely, this is when organized lists work best. So, right here, they can do boy, boy, boy. Then they could do boy, boy, girl. So I'm going to take this last column and I'm going to change it each time. And then this one right here, these are all the possibilities where the first two children are boys. This one would be boy, girl, boy, boy, girl, girl. Okay, so that went through all the possibilities right here where the first child's a boy. Now I'm going to go through, and it's the same kind of a list, except now I'm going to do it with the girls. Girl, boy, boy, girl, boy, girl, 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 boy, girl, girl, girl. There's eight possibilities. Three children, two for each one, so it's two times two times two. Okay, so probability they have more girls than boys. Okay, so I'm just looking for every time we have more girls than boys. Well, it was four out of eight. Probably at least one boy. Well, the easiest way I think that to do this one is look at ways it doesn't happen. I have at least one boy in all of them except for this one. So there's seven chances out of eight. Okay, so you're going to be doing number 13 on your this problem, this problem right here with the coins, and you're going to make an organized list kind of the same way. To get you started right here, start the list by doing, and I'll do it down here, makes it a little bit more space, with heads, 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 heads. Then you go heads, 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 tails. Heads, heads, tails, heads. Heads, heads, tails, tails. Now, repeat this list this time, continuing going down, but this time this one changes to tails. Then take the entire list, you'll have eight down this column, repeat it where the first one is all tails. Once you build your list, it'll be easier to go over and calculate these probabilities.